Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jade and in this video we're gonna discuss whether you should learn Finnish or not. This is a question that I get like all of the time, especially when I deal with people that have just moved to Finland or that have been already in Finland, but that are like, you know, not deciding whether they should focus on learning Finnish language or whether they don't, they should better like not focus on Finnish language. So I wanted to give my thoughts about it. As always, please feel free to look in the description below to if you just want to jump to a specific section that interests you the most. But otherwise, I'm super excited to share with you my thoughts on this and I hope you like it. So let's get started. And first of all, I want to start by giving a little bit of context because Finnish language, let's deal with it. It's hard. And there's like this language, it's only spoken by 5 million people. So, you know, it's not only hard, it's not useful for you if you are not in Finland, if you don't plan to stay in Finland, or if you don't want to, you know, work in a business that somehow serves Finnish people. And so that's like a one thing. And then on the other hand, if you are in Finland, the truth is that Finland has kind of like two challenges that presents when you have to decide whether you want to learn the language or not. And the first challenge is that you actually are able to live a life in Finland without learning the language. And the second one is that you can also get employed even without learning the Finnish language. So shall you learn it? For me, that was like a very, very big issue. So I want to start really by giving contexts on my own history. And so I was an exchange student in Finland, like a long time ago, for a year. Now, I did learn a little bit of Finnish in that time, obviously. I passed the Finnish test level one. I got like three areas with like grade one or like for the level one, which is the very, very basic one. And then I got one that I didn't even like reach the one. So it, my results got like below one. Um, but then I left Finland. And so when I decided to come back, I had signed up or I had accepted to study the international baccalaureate here, which was lasting three years. Of course, that was fully thought in English. So, you know, I really didn't need to learn Finnish at all. I presented six subjects and from those six subjects, one was Spanish and the other was English. Those were my only two languages. The Spanish is my mother tongue. So honestly, I didn't need Finnish. And since I was coming here just for, in my mind, just for the extent of my baccalaureate studies, it really didn't make sense for me to learn the language, especially because the studies on themselves were already quite challenging. So I had enough perfectioning my English and dealing with my studies in English. So that was like the first thing. And so now that I kind of like share my context, like, uh, and before I jump into something, like for people, it was like super surprising when I had been living in Finland for four years and they would tell me like, hey, Hade, do you speak Finnish? And I would be like, I mean, I know how to say hi, where's the toilet, how are you? But other than that, I couldn't really say that, hey, I speak Finnish. I could like really, really the most basic essential things. I could like do them. Whatever else, honestly, honestly, I couldn't. And people like a lot of times I was judged and they were like, wow, Hade, like, how is it possible that you have been living already here four years and you haven't learned Finnish. And the reality is that I wasn't planning to come to Finland to live my entire life, uh, nor did I plan to stay to, in Finland after my baccalaureate studies. So like, excuse me, but why would I bother? Honestly saying, it's nice to say that you are, that you speak three languages, but you don't need them, especially when Finnish, it's a, uh, challenging language. Later on, I discovered that I have made a huge mistake. And so I am also sharing this video so that you can avoid making the same mistakes that I did. So if you are coming to Finland and you are thinking that, okay, or you are already in Finland and you're thinking like, okay, well, should I learn Finnish language? I would say like the first thing is that you have to be very conscious about your contexts. What is your context? 
are you coming as an exchange student, maybe a rotary exchange student, a student that you are like under 18 years old? Are you coming as an Erasmus student and you are just going to be here maybe like six months to one year? Are you coming to study a degree program, which normally it's around three to four years? Or are you coming to study a master's program? That's going to be your baseline because the reason why you are coming to Finland, it's going to be extremely important. Why? Because if you are coming to Finland as an exchange student, then probably, or if you can relate, I was myself an exchange student. The most important thing for an exchange student is to learn about the culture and to have lots of fun and have a memorable experience and develop and grow. And that's something that you are just going to get out of the exchange just by being an exchange student and making connections and having friends. So really, if you're just coming for the adventure, then really it makes not much sense to learn the language. I feel that when it makes sense to focus on the language, it's if you are going to these kind of countries where there's like universal language, maybe I, I am from Mexico, maybe if I would have gone on exchange to the US or to Canada or maybe to France, uh, where I could like maybe like develop my French because when I was younger, I studied French or if I would have gone to the US or to Canada and maybe like perfect my English, maybe that would have made sense. But if that's not the case, really learning a full new language that it's just usable for you in a specific area, such as Finland, if you are not having any plans to for, like continue your studies here or work for a Finnish enterprise or anything of that sort, then it really doesn't come much useful other than by the fact that maybe after your exchange, you can say like, hey, I speak the basics of this third language. But other than that, it really doesn't help much. Now, if you're coming for a bachelor studies, which it's like a longer period of period of time, maybe like three years, four years, or maybe you want to come to bachelors and masters, when you're talking about like a longer period of time, here is where I make my mistake. Now, baccalaureate, like like my baccalaureate in Finland, like I don't feel I chose wrong. I felt I chose what was uh, the best for me because, as I said, the studies were already challenging to me and I was not used to study and speak in English like 24-7. So it made sense. But what happens if you're coming here to stay three or four years in your professional studies? And I'm talking about bachelor and master's degrees. I think that for you, the most important question is going to be, are you 100% sure that you are coming and making your studies and there is absolutely no way or possibility that you would want to continue your life in Finland and maybe have a work from here? If you are coming to Finland exclusively for the sake of your studies and for getting a bachelor's or a master's degree that says that you have a finished education and then move on to another country or back to your home country, don't bother with Finnish language. No need. I personally don't see the need. But if you are coming to Finland and you are going to spend those many years in this country, <sighs> honey, it makes sense sense that you double think those things multiple times. Why? I thought that I would just come here to study my bachelor's and after that I would be off to Mexico. But the thing when you study a bachelor's or a professional studies abroad is that you get just so much out of the education that you are receiving in that country. By the time I finished my bachelor's, I realized that, wow, like I have lived so many years in Finland. Most of my experience has been dealing with Finnish companies or being involved in Finnish projects. Um, some of them, yes, were international projects, but not, nothing, nothing so big that I could, you know, that I could differentiate myself with that. So most of my experience was coming from Finland, obviously. And so when I graduated from my bachelor's and I had to think about like, okay, 
uh, what am I going to do next? And I thought like, okay, of course, I'm going to go back to Mexico. I'm going to find a work from Mexico. But the thing was that most of my experience was coming from Finland. And during all those three years of baccalaureate plus four years of my bachelor's, I had spent seven years already in this country. And I didn't cultivate at all my Mexican audience or my Mexican network. I kind of like I cut completely off with those things and that what happened is that when I graduated uh, this turned in in a way that I had just so many contacts and possibilities in Finland and I knew about the companies operating in Finland and the work possibilities that I had in Finland and I knew like you know very little uh, of you know what are the job opportunities in Mexico that was the first thing so with this what i want to say is that you have to be very strategic because what you don't realize is that spending three to four years of your life in a different country will certainly have an effect in your life and maybe it doesn't affect you maybe you can tell me hey have it you know i can spend four years in another country get all my education from this country i'm gonna go easy back to my country or to any other country in the world and it's not gonna make a difference then that's fine but a lot of times and it's what kind of happened to me and i see ha uh, happening to like a lot of people is that they come to finland then they spend the three or the four years with the bachelors or with the masters then later on. And in all of this time, they don't study the Finnish language. And then after they graduate, they want to get some kind of work from Finland. And unless you are living in Helsinki or Turku or Tampere, it's probably going to be the case that you do need Finnish. Unless you are in the bigger cities where it's more common to say so, that there's like offers and opportunities in English language, you will require Finnish. And even when you are living in the capital area, you are like up to this point, I'm talking about 2021, you're going to find like a lot of job posts that say Finnish language is required, fluency in Finnish language is needed. You should also speak Finnish language. And the thing is that if you did not bother studying the Finnish language before when you were a student, you are going to be in a situation. So going back to where I started, if you are coming here for degree studies, either bachelor or master's, and you are, if there is, is still even like the 2% possibility that you might want to stay in Finland, get a work from here, even if that doesn't mean that you're going to spend the rest of your life in Finland. But if you are thinking that, okay, well, maybe after graduation, I'm going to spend one or two years working in Finland, learn the language. It's going to be a huge advantage for you and something and don't make the mistake also like don't make the mistake. This is the number one mistake that I did. And it's that if I could mention a one mistake, it would be that a lot of foreign students, they just run into Finland. And the first question that appears in their head, it's like, where can I find a job? Now, if you are coming to Finland with already like a tight financial situation, which I wouldn't recommend, but if that's your reality, then sure, get a job. But try to really be strategic and try to think like, you know, future think yourself. What is it that you're going to be doing after your studies? Because what happened to me and what happens to a lot of people is that they are like, hey, Hannah, but you can actually get a job in Finland even if you don't speak Finnish. Absolutely, yes. Most foreigners work in Finland, and I'm talking specifically on my city, but I know it's a problematic that it's not, it's not even a problematic, but it's like a trend that it's not exclusively to Kuopio, and it's that foreign students end up working in food delivery, newspaper delivery, cleaning services or yeah or you know something like like maybe like fast food services 
but it's normally that you are either delivering newspapers, you are cleaning or you are delivering food. Those are some of like the biggest sectors where international students can get a job and they don't necessarily need the language. Or logistics, IKEA, it's one of the like biggest, I, I feel that it's one of the biggest providers or at least a lot of people that I know that don't speak Finnish and that are international students, they all work in IKEA and you can also get a work from there. But that's normally like in logistics. And while all of these jobs will pay you a good salary because, hey, I have been a waitress uh, for six years. I am still a waitress and I can 1000% relate to the fact that all of these jobs are honorable jobs. They will pay you a salary and they will provide you with the resources that you need for living. But if you do have the possibility in your studies to learn the language and to focus on your studies, it is a disservice for you to be working in something that's not, um, that it's not nourishing your future plans. Let me explain you why. What I see oftentimes happening time after time after time after time is that a person would come to Finland, would do their studies, would find a part-time job, would take the part-time job, would not bother learning the language. And of course the person is happy. It's like, oh my God, I'm having my studies and I am also earning some money doing whatever part-time gig. But the thing is that once they graduate and they kind of like try to get a job in their area, surprise, surprise, they ask you for the Finnish language. Now, I'm not saying that there are absolutely no opportunities if you just speak English. There are, but there aren't that many. And you have to decide for yourself if you want to take the risk. Because, for example, and it even, and that also happened for me, that when I graduated, like immediately after I graduated, immediately after I graduated, I didn't have immediately like a, a job at the university. And I consider myself to be like a lucky person and to have had, you know, of course I did my work, but I do consider myself to be lucky. Uh, and even though I was lucky, the work that I'm doing at the moment at Savonia as a marketing assistant, it wasn't for me just like, you know, waiting for me after I graduated. Right after I graduated in May 2019, the reason that I applied to my next residence permit was based on me being a waitress. Now, I like being a waitress because I like my clients and I like the job. But at the end of the day, you know, if I may be super honest, I initially didn't came to Finland to be a waitress. I studied a four year bachelor program on international business. And if I was to just, you know, later on just perform as a waitress, then why on earth did I study that degree? Because waitresses in Finland have specific studies, like people in Finland do study to be a waitress. So, you know, I have seen it repeated like many, many times on repeat that people study a bachelor's, then end up having a residence permit on work on another type of job. And that does not make any sense. And the biggest thing is that if you didn't do your homework, if you were not intentional, if you were not strategic, if you were just like, hey, I am a student, I want to do my part-time job, Um, and, you know, just do my studies and do my part-time job because it pays well and I recognize that it pays well. And then you graduate and you are like, okay, well, cool. Now that I am a graduated person, I want to have, you know, I work in my field, but surprise, surprise, you don't have the language. That might be a problem and that might be something that really stops you from having all the opportunities that you would want to have. So what I say and my biggest recommendation, it's like really be very strategic from the beginning. 
stop yourself for a moment and be very intentional. Why are you coming to Finland and where do you see yourself after your studies? And make your research on time. I'm not saying it's impossible for you to have a successful life in Finland without Finnish, but you have to, you know, make your research on time. Research which are the international companies in your city that hire, even though you don't have the language skills. You can also think about, you know, becoming an entrepreneur and maybe like start your operations beforehand so that whenever you graduate, you already have a pack of clients or prospective clients that would be ready to buy from your services. And you would be like, you know, I am an entrepreneur and maybe have like a partner, some like Finnish partner that can take care of all the stuff that it's in Finnish, but be very strategic. It doesn't mean to be in Finland, you don't need to have Finnish language as a must. But if you don't do your research on time, if you were not intentional, if you were not strategic, if you just, if you didn't thought things through, you may, you maybe wake up to a reality that it's not the nicest one once you graduate and then you are faced with the fact that, wow, if you would have had the Finnish language, maybe things would have looked different for you. So that's what I want to say. And I hope that this is, this is not a video uh, that, this is a video with the pure and only intention that you are able to make the best decision that serves you. So unless you are 100% clear that you don't want to stay here, then don't learn Finnish language. But if there is even a little bit of a doubt that you might want to stay here afterwards, that you might want to get hired here. And if you know that you do not want to be an entrepreneur, nor do you want to just have the hopes that some international firm is going to hire you, do your job and learn the Finnish language. Finnish language is such a, such a language that it's going to be hard to master. And I'm telling you that if you find it hard to master while studying, it's even going to be harder to master when you are already in the work life. So if for some reason, just concluding, you are being supported by your family financially during your studies and you have the possibility to not work, Focus on the Finnish language if it's that you want to stay here. Now, if you absolutely need to work because you do need to work because you need those resources to cover your stay in Finland, then try to make a space for the Finnish language. I feel that Finland is growing so much and it's developing so much. And there's going to be a point where maybe a lot of companies are going to hire without you necessarily knowing Finnish language. However, the reality is that Finland is not there yet. And it is just good for me to let you know this so that you are able to make the best decision uh, for you. And don't, you know, don't be in a position where you have to wish that, oh my God, you know, like I wish someone would have told me or I wish someone would have guided me. So I hope to be for you this kind of guide that I did not have and that I wish I would have. Now, nowadays I do speak Finnish language. I can communicate in Finnish language. People understand me. I embrace all of my errors as I speak. But, you know, I was really just lucky that I learned Finnish language. I got my employment as a waitress and being a waitress was what opened me the doors to the Finnish language. Now, my biggest problem is because I learned Finnish language by practice, never by studying it. Uh, my grammar, it's a mess. People understand me. I can communicate after one year and a half already working as a marketing assistant and also writing some uh, like so many emails in Finnish. I can communicate, but I didn't dedicate the time to study the language academically, which means 
that sometimes I struggle a lot with, you know, the grammar. And now I don't know, like, it feels really weird because I understand Finnish language, but I just lack these, you know, basis of the language of how to speak it and write it properly. And now, in a, and now I'm in a very awkward position, but that doesn't matter at the end of the day because I know how to communicate. I learned it kind of like by luck. Uh, by being a waitress and being a waitress gave me the enough vocabulary so that later on I could expand this vocabulary into my professional working life, which is at the moment being a marketing assistant. So yes, I hope this video has been useful for you. I hope that you get to reflect cautiously whether you should spend some time learning Finnish language or whether you don't want to bother with it and uh, yeah, I hope it has been useful. So hoping that you have a fantastic week. I'm filming this on a Monday, so a fantastic week. But if you're watching me in the morning, afternoon, evening, I hope you're having a very, very lovely time. And I look very much forward to see you in my next video. Bye.